the force on a charge in a magnetic field. So we have three goals for this session. We'll look at the force experienced by a charged particle in a magnetic field, and we'll do that in various circumstances. We'll try to come up with a general equation for the magnitude of that force, and then we'll go over what we call the right-hand rule, which gives the direction of the force. So, first, let us go back a little bit and remind ourselves about the force exerted on a charged particle in an electric field. That's given by F is QE. So we're really looking for the equivalent uh, of the force exerted on a charge in a magnetic field. Is there such an equivalent? If so, what does it look like? So, we'll do some observations. Okay, so let's say the, uh, we have a positive charge. It's initially stationary. We let it go from rest. And if we let it go from rest in an electric field that points down, then the charge accelerates in the direction of the field. It's a positive charge, remember. If we do the same thing in a magnetic field, not a thing happens. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so we'll try something else. Okay, so again we'll compare the electric field and the magnetic field. Electric field, if we throw it into the field with initial velocity, uh, in the direction of the field, then it just gets faster, right? There's an acceleration again in the direction of the field. In the magnetic field, we throw it into the field parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. Again, there's no change we observe. It just goes at constant velocity. So our conclusion so far is that magnetic fields exert no force on stationary charges, and magnetic fields exert no force on charges that have velocities directed parallel to the field. That's very different from what we observed when we put a charged particle in an electric field. Okay, so we'll keep going. Now, again, this is all about electric fields. Okay, so this is review. We've got three objects, and we'll just chuck them into an electric field. The electric field is directed down. If we have a positive charge, then it follows a path much like a baseball does if you throw the baseball on the Earth in the uniform gravitational field of the Earth. It follows a, uh, a lovely parabolic path that curves downward. A neutral particle is undeflected, and a negative charge follows a lovely parabolic path that curves upward. Again, this is for an electric field. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for magnetic field, but note that the magnetic field is out of the screen, points toward you. Okay, so when we do this with a positive charge, we get this looks a little bit like a, para a parabola at the beginning, but what you notice is, in fact, it's uniform circular motion. The thing goes at constant speed around a circle. The neutral object, again, does nothing. It's unaffected by the field. And just like with an electric field, the negative charge does the opposite of what the positive charge does. But again, this is very different from what we saw with the electric field. In the case of a charged particle in a magnetic field, if you throw it in the right direction at least, you get a uniform circular motion. Okay. So, magnetic fields exert no force on neutral particles. We'll just summarize some things we've observed so far. Uh, the force exerted on a positive charge is opposite to that exerted on a negative charge. All those are things that are true for electric fields, too. And this is very different. The force on a charged particle is perpendicular to the velocity and perpendicular to the field. Okay, and in the special case, where the velocity and field are perpendicular to one another, then you get uniform circular motion. Okay, so we will investigate that particular special case a little bit more, but do remember that it is a special case when the velocity and the field are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so we'll do some more observations. Okay, so on the left, we see what happens when the charged particle is in a field, magnetic field we symbolize with the letter B. And so here we have a field B, and we get that. And if the field is doubled to 2B, well, what we observe is that the radius of the path is reduced by a factor of 2. 
it's half the radius when we double the field. Okay, so what we uh, observe here is that really the force is proportional to the magnetic field. So doubling the magnetic field doubles the force. So we can say the force is proportional to the magnetic field, and that was very similar to what we got for electric fields. The force an electric field exerts on a charged particle is also proportional to the field, in that case, the electric field. Remember, F is QE. Okay, more observations. So here we've got charge Q in a magnetic field, a charge 2Q, let's see now, that looks like half the radius, charge 3Q, that's in fact one-third the radius, okay, so all of the things are equal, same mass, same, velo same initial velocity, okay, so what do we observe from that? Well, the radius varies inversely with the charge, and what that tells us, in fact, the force is proportional to the charge. Again, that's something we saw with the electric field, right? F is QE, so here we got F proportional to Q, proportional to B, the magnetic field. Okay, but this is something we did not see anything like in the electric field case of velocity dependence. Okay, so here we've got charge thrown into the field with speed V, charge thrown into the field with 2V, oh look, the radius is double, 3V, the radius is tripled, and if you time those, they take the same amount of time to go around, it's amazing. Okay, so rearrange the uh, F is MV squared over R equation to say R is MV squared over F. Wait a second, it looks like the radius should be proportional to the square of the speed, but our observations show that the radius is proportional to just the speed. That tells us that the force must be also proportional to the speed, so the whole right-hand side is really just proportional to V, not to V squared. Okay, so that's a weird kind of force, a force proportional to speed. Okay, so summarizing some stuff, no force on a stationary charge or on a charge moving parallel to the field. Uh, reversing the sign of the charge reverses the direction of the force, and force proportional to Q, B, and V. So, in fact, what we write down for the magnitude of the force is this. F is QVB sine theta. Theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field. Okay, so somewhat more complicated than the QE force we got for electric fields. Okay, so the direction of the force is, which is Remember, perpendicular to both V and B is given by what we call the right-hand rule. So, and don't forget that a force that's perpendicular to the velocity, such as this one, cannot change the object's speed or the kinetic energy. All it can do is make the object change direction, gives you circular motion. Well, gives you perfectly circular motion in the special case of velocity perpendicular to B. Okay, summary of the right-hand rule. Point your fingers on your right hand in the direction of the velocity. Curl your fingers into the direction of the magnetic field. Or point your palm in the direction of the field. That gets your hand going the right way. Stick out your thumb. Your thumb points in the direction of the force experienced by a positive charge. And if you happen to have a negative charge, then your right hand lies to you and just take the opposite direction. Okay, so here's a picture of this. Okay, fingers on the right hand are in the direction of V, the velocity. The palm points in the direction of the field and you can curl your fingers there. Which way is the thumb going? That's the direction of the force that is out of the screen. Okay. And don't forget, the force goes the other way if the charge is negative. Okay, and that is it for our summary of the force a charged particle feels when it's in a magnetic field.